All right, y'all. So I'm getting ready to show y'all four of the best and most coziest fall recipes you could ever think of. I've got two savory and two sweet. So sit back, relax, grab you a drink, and let me do the cooking. Come on, y'all. Let's go. All right, y'all, so we are getting ready to make llama bean soup. I've just got two cans of tomato soup here, um, a bag of baby llama beans, and a pound of ground beef. Now, I will have a Fallon's video linked down below in our channel because this is something she grew up eating. I think maybe her mama created it, but they absolutely love it, so we're gonna give it a try. All right, y'all, so I got our pound of ground beef in here. We're just gonna season that up and add some onions to it. I don't think Fallon does that, but we love onions, so <laughs> we're going to just add some to it. Um, and then some Badia Complete. You can use whatever seasonings you want to, but we're just going to go ahead and brown this one up. And like I said, I am going to add just a little bit of onion to it because I like cooking my hamburger with onion. Now we're, since this is browned, I'm gonna, so that is browned up doesn't have very much fat in it at all. So we're gonna go ahead and dump these llama beans in. And we'll just give this a stir and let those beans cook a little bit. And then we'll add in both cans of our tomato soup. All right, in goes both cans of tomato soup. And then I'm adding in some beef broth. It's a 14.5 ounce can. All right, y'all, here is that soup. Does that not look delicious? It is so good. I've done tried it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But we're gonna go ahead and get this put in a bowl, and then I think I'm gonna make some grilled cheese to go with it. All right, y'all, so for supper tonight, we're gonna make some stuffed Italian acorn squash. So I've already roasted the acorn squash. I just cut a slice off the bottom of it to where it would sit flat on my sheet and then cut each one in half. Took everything out and roasted it at 375 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes. It just depends on your oven. And they've been sitting out here. They're still warm though. So now we're gonna go ahead and make this filling. I've got um, a package of portobello mushrooms that are diced up. I've got some already pre-cooked rice that I've had in my deep freezer from another meal. Then I've got a diced up medium onion and then a bell pepper, just a small bell pepper diced up. You'll need about a pound of uh, mild ground Italian sausage. You'll need some garlic, then some avocado oil or olive oil, butter, whatever you wanna use. And then I'm gonna use Badia Complete to season it with. And then we're gonna use this cheddar jack to put over top when we roast them in the oven. So in our skillet, we're gonna put a little bit of avocado oil in there and we're gonna put all of our veggies in here and let them cook down a little bit. And then we'll add in the sausage and then the last would be rice. Now we're just gonna let this cook down until all these veggies are tender and then we will add in the um, Italian sausage and brown that up too. Okay, so the veggies cooked down and I added in the pound of Italian sausage. We're gonna go ahead and cook that until it is cooked all the way through. And then we will add in our rice and our garlic. All right, so that is cooked all the way through. Y'all know I don't measure my garlic, I measure it with my heart. <laughs> but that's probably about two tablespoons. <laughs> you can add as much or as little as you want though. And now we're gonna dump in our rice. Not the bowl, just the rice. <laughs> all right, so we've got our acorn squash here. I've got the mix. We're just gonna go ahead and scoop that right into the acorn squash, and then we'll come back and just kind of top them off. I just want to get all of it in each one. 
and then we'll come back and put the cheese on it. Got them all in there. Now it's time for the cheese. And then we're gonna put them in the broiler. All right, y'all, into the oven they go, just to broil them, and then it'll be time to eat. All right, here is the acorn squash after they've gotten out of the broiler. And then we're just gonna pair it with some sweet potato fries that I cut up and just seasoned them with some avocado oil and a little bit of badia complete. And that's gonna be supper. All right, y'all, so I figured we'd just go ahead and make this delicious apple butter pecan dump cake. Um, so I got this. Um, All right, y'all, so let's get ready to make this apple butter pecan dump cake. It cannot get any simpler than this, and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. I am making a few substitutions, but I will have the original recipe linked down below for you. So we're just gonna use this Betty Crocker butter pecan cake mix. I only have one can of apple pie filling. You're supposed to have two. This makes a nine by 13, but I only have one, so we're gonna use it. But I do have another can of fried apples. So we're just gonna mix the two. It's gonna be just fine, just fine. I don't have any extra pecans, but I do have some walnuts. So we're gonna work with it. Use what you have instead of buying extra. That's how you save on your groceries. And then you'll also need some brown sugar and then of course some butter. Whenever this gets done, we're gonna have some vanilla ice cream with it as well. So let's go ahead and get to making this, shall we? All right, so we have our sprayed dish. We're gonna go ahead and dump in both cans of apples in here. We're gonna spread them around a little bit because like I said, one can's fried apples and one can is um, apple pie filling. I honestly don't think there's too much of a difference. We've got both cans in here. I'm just trying to make it a little bit even. Now, for me, the easiest way to do that is just to cut a little bitty corner out of it. That way you can kind of go around the whole cake. Then on top of this, we're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar as well. And then we're gonna take about a quarter cup of brown sugar and put it right on top of this cake mix and then we're gonna crush up some of those walnuts on top of that and then we'll add butter to it. Now I've just got a little bit of a handful here. And now this is also not in the recipe, but I think it needs a little bit of cinnamon. So we're gonna add some cinnamon. If you don't want cinnamon or don't like cinnamon, just leave it off. Ain't gonna hurt a thing. Now we're gonna cut these tabs of butter and put them all over the top. So we're just putting those on over here. And like I said, if you don't want the walnuts, you don't have to add them. I just think it's gonna be good with some vanilla ice cream. Growing up in Mississippi, we used to have a pecan tree out in the yard and we used to pick them. I'd sit there and shell them and eat them right there. So good. But I like pecans, but I do love me some walnuts. And this is gonna be delicious with some vanilla ice cream as soon as it gets out of the oven. All right, y'all, here it is, hot and out of the oven. Does that not look absolutely delicious? get us a good sharp knife and cut these right down the middle. All right, so we've got all of those cut in half. We're just gonna go ahead and pull these stem, well not stems, but the seeds out of it. And then we're gonna put them meat side down, flush side down, whatever you wanna call it, and get them into a 400 degree oven for like I said, probably 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm definitely saving these seeds. Okay. Nope, that's kind of a little bit cattywampus sitting them. So we've got both of our sheet pans. We're just going to flip them just like so. And they are going to go in there and bake until they are nice and tender. But I did have my sheet pan sprayed with a little bit of um, 
vegetable oil. So I just figured I'd show you how easy this skin comes off once you let it um, bake until it's tender and then it cools off. <laughs> I mean, it literally just peels right off of there and then you're just left with the flesh of the pumpkin. All right, so we have all of our pumpkin in our bowl. I'm just gonna go ahead and mash all of this together and get it pureed up. I'll probably put it in my blender just to make it a little bit easier. And then we will start making the pies. Okay, so we've got that all nice and blended up. We are just gonna go ahead and throw this puree into the bowl and get to the second. All right, yeah, so we've got our pumpkin puree right here. It is divine. <laughs> there is just all that natural sugar in there. But it is, I'm telling y'all, this is the best pumpkin pie ever. So definitely give it a try. I'll have the recipe typed out there below. I know I've had a lot of people asking for it. And I'll just go right ahead and share it with you. So, all right, y'all. So I'm getting ready to share my famous white pumpkin pie with you all. So starting back here, I've got two cups of um, freshly pureed, uh, just oven roasted some white pumpkins. And then I pureed them. So I've got two cups of that. You'll need about one to two tablespoons or teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. You'll need a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk and about a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons of vanilla. You'll need a half a cup of white sugar, a half a cup of light brown sugar, and a quarter cup of flour. You'll also need some nutmeg to sprinkle on top of each pie. You'll need two eggs and a stick of butter. And of course, I've got two um, deep dish pie crust right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all mixed up and get into the oven. Okay, so we're gonna put our pumpkin in the bowl first. Make sure you get all of it out because you're gonna need it. You don't wanna waste it. <laughs> Next, we're gonna add in the half a cup of white sugar. We're gonna add in the half a cup of brown sugar. And I forgot to get the salt. We're gonna add about a dash <laughs> of salt. Maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, if that. Just enough. Now we're gonna go in with our two teaspoons of vanilla. We are going in with our whole can of evaporated milk. And then we're gonna whisk this together and then we will add in the flour and the eggs. So give this a whisk. And then we're gonna add in our butter and our pumpkin pie spice. Give that another stir. Now with that measuring cup I used, it was probably more of like two and a half cups of um, pumpkin, which is just fine. It's not gonna hurt a thing. We're gonna go ahead and whisk those eggs in there, then add in the flour, getting lumps in there. But you do it however you wanna do it. Now please feel free to adjust this. If you think it needs more sugar, if you taste it, and you think it needs a little bit more sweetness, go right ahead. I don't like an overly sweet pumpkin pie because you've got the, you know, whipped cream and stuff that goes on it. So I don't make mine overly sweet, but I make it just enough. All right. So you see how it kind of coats the spoon. That's exactly what you want. So we're going to go ahead and get our cup that we measured our sugar in. And we're going to go ahead and use that to kind of put it into the pie pans. But I always put mine on um, a sheet pan. That way I have something sturdy to get them out <laughs> and it doesn't cause no issue. So we're gonna go ahead and get these filled. Okay, so I just sprinkled the tops with some nutmeg. If you don't like nutmeg, you could always use more pumpkin pie spice over the top of it, but I think this just gives it a little bit of something extra. So these are gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes until they are completely set. You'll see a little bit of a wiggle right in the middle, but not very much. Um, and then once they cool off, they'll be ready to eat. All right, y'all, here are these beauties. They cooked up so nice and they are absolutely delicious. So now we're just gonna let them sit here and cool and then we'll be ready to have right after supper. All right, y'all, that is it for this week's video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and it gave you some inspiration of something new to make this fall to keep your family nice and cozy. Until next time, my sweet friends, if you are in need of prayer, please let me know below and I will be honored to pray for you all. Until next time, God bless. Bye.